were saying that it just made me think of, of this quote where it doesn't matter if you're drowning. It doesn't matter if you're drowning in 10 feet of water or 100 feet of water, you're still drowning. And so, you know, if you look at some, somebody competing at the Olympics, it doesn't matter if you're competing at the Olympic games or at state meet, because what you're feeling on the inside is still those feelings. And so, um, I think it is hard and I love that there's been so many conversations on it recently because it's a little ambiguous since everybody feels different things. And so it's hard to understand. It's hard to, to figure out how to help when you don't know, you can't see inside somebody else's and especially a child, they're still trying to figure out how to put words to what they're feeling, um, to either ask for help, get help or to navigate that situation. And so I think, you know, I've, I've taken a, a long, hard look at all of the mental health um, advocacies this year in particular. And it's something that I want to start implementing at a youth level of building that ammo, so to speak, of you build that internal strength um, from a mental health standpoint, so disciplined and so tough that when you do have those days or you're struggling, you know how to get out of it. It doesn't mean that every day is going to be a great day and sunshine and rainbows, but when you're faced with an obstacle, you're faced with the pressure, you know how to, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath or whatever works for you. And you've built that up over so many years that when you get to, to a really big moment, whether it's in the gym or outside of the gym, you're going to be comfortable and confident in how to handle it and get through it. Sam, I, I love what you just said. And I love the idea of like building that into to like an athlete's training from a young age. Cause I also think like all of that pays forward so much into like life after sports, that resilience that you can develop, like the tools that you might learn to, to deal with those situations. And when you are the heart surgeon and you're, you know, you're in that situation, you just have this so much to draw on from your experience. So figuring out ways to build that in is such a good idea. And I, I think- don't think it- Oh, please go ahead, Sam. I was just going to say, and I don't think, you know, coaches have a really important role in teachers and yeah, you might not be curing COVID, but you might be inspiring the person that's going to cure cancer or COVID. And so that's kind of how I think of it too, is, you know, you're inspiring these kids to feel passionate about something and giving them the life lessons to be successful in whatever they choose to do in life, whether they're a surgeon or the president of the United States, right? Absolutely. Go and I, I, I would also say it's not, a, what I feel is it's not a comparison piece. Her problems aren't worse than mine or mine aren't worse than hers. And therefore, I don't think we should be making that comparison. What works for that particular athlete and that particular person. And I think reinforcing with, you know, your, your child or who you work with, that being vulnerable, asking for help is a sign of mental toughness and courage and being vulnerable is exactly, it's the opposite of what some think, you know, oh my gosh, if I'm asking for help, that means there's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you for asking for help. Actually, that's a sign of strength that you can turn around and say, this is what I need to be successful. 